Now, I'm super excited to be doing this overview video on the Sapphire Nitro RX 6800 XT here. The only downside is, is that I don't get to keep the card after I finish my video. So let's get started with the specs first of the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800 XT, built on the new and improved AMD RDNA 2 gaming architecture using the 7 nanometer process. It has a boost clock of up to 2360 MHz and a game clock of 2110 MHz. The game features 72 compute units and has 128 MB of the all new AMD Infinity Cache and 16 GB of dedicated GDDR6 memory. The card can handle up to four displays and supports one HDMI 2.1 port and also three display ports at version 1.4. The card requires a two 8-pin power connector and the recommended power supply is 750 watts. There is a direct dual BIOS switch that can be found on the side of the card, so if you ever happen to push your manual overclocks a little bit too far, you always have a backup BIOS to revert to. The Nitro Plus series has always been very aesthetically pleasing and can blend into most case designs with ease, but it also supports ARGB, making it even easier to get your custom lighting themes. The card's form factor will fit into most cases, the only thing to consider is that it can take up to three expansion slots. Sapphire are always finding new ways to innovate on their already top of the class cooling solutions and these cards are no exception to that rule with the new and improved hybrid fan blade design that helps the card increase downward air pressure, reducing your GPU and memory temperatures by three degrees, while still keeping those fan noises low. And yes, the fan still features Sapphire's quick fan connect that enables you to quickly replace a fan head without having to return the card to the manufacturer for repair. Other improvements to the cooler include brand new fin designs to improve noise levels, but also accelerate centralized airflow around the GPU to dissipate the heat more efficiently. The memory modules also see improvements with an additional heat pipe and improved thermal pads to deliver better thermal performance. Thanks to the new RDNA 2 architecture, these cards are jam packed full of exciting new features such as smart access memory or sound for short. This utilizes the bandwidth of the PCI Express to remove the bottlenecks and increase performance that enables you to access all the memory on your GPU. Usually systems are limited on how much VRAM they can use at one given time, but thanks to RDNA 2 and the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, you can get the most out of your GPU's memory. Now it's important to note that not every game will see a benefit when using this feature and the performance boosts you do see will vary from title to title. To take advantage of these features, you'll need an AMD 5000 series CPU, an AMD Radeon RX 6000 series graphics card, and a 500 series AM4 motherboard. We also see hardware accelerated ray tracing introduced in the 6000 series of cards, giving more dramatic and realistic lightings in titles that support ray tracing. If you'd love to immerse yourself in new worlds and environments, this feature has you covered. Gaming at either high frame rates or high resolution can put a lot of strain on our memory bandwidth, and this is where Infinity Cache really lends a helping hand. Based on our testing, it's not only looking like Infinity Cache is able to ensure that we avoid bandwidth related bottlenecks, but having so much cache so close to the cores appears to be giving us an incredibly smooth and stable experience, helping reduce micro stutters. Now, AMD's Fidelity FX is an open source image quality toolkit comprising of seven different solutions so far available to developers to implement into their games, optimizing for AMD RDNA and RDNA 2 architectures. These include contrast adaptive sharpening, ambient inclusion, variable shading, screen space reflections, denoiser, HDR mapper, and downsampler. Now you can learn more about these features on the AMD website. There it shows you some great examples of how the software is actually implemented. Also important to note is that AMD will soon be releasing a new feature called Super Resolution that takes a low resolution image and upscales it to a high resolution using machine learning to help performance. So make sure you look out for that in the future. Anti-lag and boost mode are primarily designed to improve input latency to keep your mouse feeling smooth and reactive at all times. Boost mode will dramatically reduce your visual quality in favor of FPS. This applies when turning your mouse from side to side, looking in new areas of the map, etc. But if you're running in a straight line or using very little mouse movement, your quality will sharpen up to your default value that you set in game. Anti-lag feature works best if your GPU is under heavy intense loads. In these situations, the CPU will be processing your mouse inputs ahead of your GPU, which can cause that horrible drift and lagging feeling that no one likes. 
By enabling anti-lag feature in your games, you'll be able to significantly reduce input latency, keeping your mouse nice and smooth and more natural feeling. Let's do a quick benchmark using Watchdog Legions. We're gonna do a series of tests starting with no bells and whistles at first with the three standard resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K on ultra settings. Here we score 106 FPS at 1080p, 81 FPS at 1440p, and 47 FPS at 4K. I then turned on smart access memory and then ran the same benchmarks, and we do see a small FPS boost of one or two frames. As I said earlier, this feature really varies depending on title to title, so some games can have 10% performance boost, whereas others have zero. And finally, we did the test again, this time using ray tracing, of course, and we used the high preset on the ray tracing feature, but everything else remained the same on ultra settings at the same resolutions. To summarize, the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800 XT is a rasteration god. It pumps out amazing performance at 1080p, 1440p, and even 4K. And it's literally topping many of the charts as the most powerful graphics card across many different games and different resolutions. And I think it's safe to say that beyond the raw performance of the card, the most anticipated thing that gamers are wanting is ray tracing. And the good news is, is that it's finally here. And to be honest, considering that this is AMD's first generation, it's looking pretty competent. In AMD particular titles such as the 5 and Godfall, the numbers are promising. The only thing that we're really lacking right now is a way to boost race tracing performance without losing too much visual quality, which is why we can't wait to see what happens in AMD's Fidelity FX suite, in particular, Super Resolution. This exciting feature allows games to render at sub-native resolutions and then upscale each frame using machine learning in order to maximize image quality. This should, in theory, rival native resolution whilst also being much more efficient. The problem is we don't actually have access to this feature at the time recording, but, uh, you know, it's something to look forward to in the future. Simply put, this card is amazing and it's super exciting to see how well it performed. Now, if this video has piqued your interest and you're looking at a Sapphire graphics card, make sure to uh, do your own research, make sure to go watch loads of reviews before going out and buying, and I hope this video has helped you in your consideration.